Krishna. <laughs> if you only knew what goes on in the few minutes. The drama. The drama before that we say action. And, the drama queen. And the drama king. Wow. Okay. All right. It's Canto 4, Chapter 7, Text 54. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate because you go up high the last one will come down <laughs> all right text 54 the lord continued one who does not consider brahma vishnu or shiva or the living entities in general to be separate from the supreme and who knows brahman actually realizes peace others do not purple Two words are very significant in this verse. Trayanam indicates three, namely Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and Lord Vishnu. Bidam means different. They are three and therefore they are separate. But at the same time they are one. This is the philosophy of simultaneous oneness and difference, which is called a chintya Veda Veda Tattva. The example given in the Brahma Samhita is that milk and yogurt are simultaneously one and different. Both are milk, but the yogurt has become changed. In order to achieve real peace, one should see everything and every living entity, including Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, as non-different from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. No one is independent. Every one of us is an expansion of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This accounts for unity and diversity. There are diverse manifestations, but at the same time they are one in Vishnu. Everything is an expansion of Vishnu's energy. Hmm. Well, we can understand, like, when it's explained that Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma are one and different. I can understand people get confused and then therefore just say, well, yeah, so Lord Shiva is the supreme, absolute truth, or Lord Brahma. Because they don't understand the ex explanation that as Prabhupada is giving of milk and yogurt are simultaneously one and different. Yes, both are milk, but the yogurt has become changed like that. And they don't understand. It's very hard for people, especially like for myself growing up in the Hindu culture. You see a lot of people that work relatives that worship. I never knew anyone that worshipped Lord Brahma, I must be honest. I've never known anyone that was a Lord. But obviously Lord Shiva, Lakshmi, Ganapati, like that, that's very common amongst Vaishya Patels, definitely. <laughs> For certain obvious. Some people, Mataji, I guess. So. Oh yeah, but beyond that, yeah, I meant specifically the relatives that own news agents, definitely. <laughs> wanted wealth, Lakshmi, wanted worship Ganapati to remove the obstacles and it was felt because Lord Shiva gave immediate quick boons that it was very prosperous to worship these personalities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but interesting, yeah, never, never come across anyone in Mark bringing that worship Lord Brahma. I only got exposed to that primarily through Prabhupada's books and maybe a little bit in Bollywood Pro Indian programs where they show someone with more than one head and you don't quite, you know, you kind of understand, okay, that's Brahma or Demigod, but it was to be fair with Srila Prabhupada that exposed that personality actually, and explained his significance <coughs> Yeah, it's kind of, that's an interesting point of course, lots of people will directly worship usually Shiva or Vishnu not generally Brahma but a lot amongst the Hindu community recognize that as a trinity. Mm, mm -hmm. And they, they know, you know, Vishnu, Brahma, Mahesh, or Brahma, Mahesh, and Vishnu, you know. Mm. They know that trinity. Mm. And, you know, so it's interesting what you're saying or pointing out that, um, uh, that yeah, people understand how it's being said that they're kind of all one but they don't get the distinction and that's why that's a chintya 
-hmm. That's the word achencha means it's inconceivable. Mm -hmm. So it's incon it's it's hard to understand how they are three distinctly different personalities at the same time. They are one and the same. Mm -hmm. And our focus is usually on the distinction because there's been an overemphasis in the past on the oneness. So like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, interesting mm -hmm. thing. Fifty-five, yeah. <clears throat> the sage Maitreya said, Thus Daksha, the head of all Prajapatis, having been nicely instructed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, worshipped Lord Vishnu. After worshipping him by performing the prescribed sacrificial ceremonies, Daksha separately worshipped Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva. Purport. Lord Vishnu should be offered everything, and his prasad, or his, his prasad, should be distributed to all the demigods. This practice is still followed in the temple of Jagannath at Puri. There are many temples of demigods around the main temple of Jagannath, and the prasad, which is offered first to Jagannath, is distributed to all the demigods. The deity of Bagalin, Bagalin, is worshipped with the prasad of Vishnu. Not sure which deity that is. And also in the famous Lord Shiva temple of Bhuvaneshwar, the prasad of Lord Vishnu is, uh, the prasad of Lord Vishnu or Lord Jagannath is offered to the deity of Lord Shiva. This is the Vaishnava principle. The Vaishnava does not deride even ordinary living entities, including the small ant. Everyone is offered proper respect according to his position. Now that's an interesting point. Everyone is offered proper respect according to his position, mm -hmm. which is the thing that we were mentioning the other day, and we often mention about the verse, Vidyavanaya Sampani Brahmani Gavi Hastani Shuni Chavasupaki Chapandita Samadarshana that we see with equal vision. But we don't treat the dog the way we would treat the cow. We don't treat the cow the way mm. we would treat the elephant. And the Brahmana isn't treated the way we treat a dog. Mm. So this is good. I like that. Everyone is offered proper respect according to his position. But still respect is there. That's the key. Nice. Mm. Um, the uh, Yes, the offering, however, is in relation to the center, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna or Vishnu. The devotee who is highly elevated sees the relationship to Krishna in everything. He does not see anything as being independent of Krishna. That is his vision of oneness. Great. So that's it. So everything is related to Krishna. Everything is Vishnu's energy. Everything is Krishna's energy. And in that way, I show respect. And, um, uh, yeah, I show respect to everything, understanding that it's Krishna's energy. But I do that in accordance with its position. So I like that. Anyway, very nice. Yes. Excuse me. I didn't quite understand the offering, however, is in relation to the center, the Supreme Personality of God. It seemed to be... Yeah, where did that come from? Did that make sense to you? Why? What? The, yeah, after it says everyone is offered proper respect according to his position. The offering, however, is in relation to the center. Okay, maybe it's kind of saying everyone is offered proper respect. It's just... Oh, so easy. So it's just after that. The offering, however, is in relation to the center of the spring. It seemed kind of random, but I guess it means the offering of respect. The offering, however is in relation to the center. So we offer respect in relation to Krishna, who's in the center, I guess. That's what I have an understanding. If you have a different understanding, you can put it in the comments below. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that reminds, that point reminds me of, um, 
we read we've discussed it recently like if you see your spiritual master sometimes they when they come in the temple and when they you know they also pay respects we you know sannyasis also bow down and pay respects <coughs> to those who are junior and then we Prabhupada explains that you know senior devotees elevated devotees they do this because they see the super soul they're respecting the super soul in every body it's not you know sometimes we oh my goodness i'm not supposed to pay respect to you but you you shouldn't be bound down to me so i've read like Prabhupada explains that they they show proper respect like this everything to the center you know they're appreciating you all the spirit souls and krishna is in your heart yeah and they're a pain like that although there's also etiquette you know of paying paying respects and obeisances but anyway yeah i yeah. mean different persons you know yeah. i would offer respect my obeisances rupa goswami explains in nectar of instruction that you know, one who is simply chanting the holy names, but is a neophyte, we offer obeisances in the mind. Someone who has taken, you know, initiation in the holy name, we offer respects and um, obeisances. And one who is uh, fully versed and fully dedicated to, you know, practicing Krishna consciousness, having taken Diksha Mantra, um, then that person we we offer uh, you know our life, and we serve with all respect. So, so there are different gradations again, according to one's position, like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Text fifty six. We've all respect Daksha, worship Lord Shiva with his shell, the remnants <coughs> of the yagya. Oh, we should have just done that in the beginning, you know. After finishing the ritualistic sacrificial activities, he satisfied all the other demigods and the other people assembled there. Then after finishing all these duties with the priests, he took a bath and was fully satisfied. Popa, Lord Rudra Shiva was properly worshipped with his share of the remnants of the Yagya. Yagya is Vishnu and whatever prashad is offered to Vishnu is offered to everyone, even to Lord Shiva. Sri Swami also comments in his connection, Savena, Savena Bhagena, the remnants of the Yagya offered to all the demigods and others. So now we see that Daksha Swami performed his sacrifice, which he wanted to do some, you know, before, and then he messed it all up, and now he's got a goat's head, and all his people have got damaged bodies. And we can see that it says here in a verse, we all respect Daksha, worship Lord Shiva with his share of the remnants of the Yagya. So like I said, I guess hindsight is something, you know, should have just done that, shouldn't you? <laughs> well, that's the saying. Hind hindsight is twenty twenty, you know? Yeah. When we look back, we can see, oh yeah, I should have, I should have, I should have. But when you're looking forward, it's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what I should do. Anyway, there yeah. you go, Daksha. All right. All right, shall we? Yeah. Call it. Call it a day. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Grantarajshri Mahabhagavatam ki jai. Bye.